Yes, hello to you all once again. Welcome back to Classic uh, Dirt Bike TV and uh, we're uh, gradually uh, making our way through the footage uh, from the 2024 Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show. We have uh, lots of lovely bikes uh, still to come here on my uh, video channel and I hope you enjoyed uh, the first few bikes that we showed you in uh, episode uh, one. So we're going to crack on and uh, get straight into our next uh, feature, which of course is episode two. Right, so uh, straight away we're going to take a look at some uh, nice uh, YZ uh, Yamahas that were all lined up on display. And uh, this collection here uh, had almost uh, all of the YZ uh, Yamahas from uh, a little uh, PW50 there right up to the uh, big daddy of them all, the mighty uh, YZ490 uh, open class uh, rocket ships. Now I'm not entirely sure if these uh, collection of YZs were uh, being offered up for sale on the day or maybe just uh, for display uh, purposes only but uh, it's certainly a fine uh, looking collection and uh, they all look uh, pretty standard looking bikes and I suppose if you were uh, attending the show looking uh, for an old uh, YZ racer then I expect that uh, this is the stand that you would have uh, probably have uh, found them on. But we have a nice uh, little uh, threesome here what uh, looks like uh, it could be a small PW50 and maybe a YZ50 and YZ60 there in the background but uh, how many of us uh, began uh, by uh, running around on uh, one of these uh, little uh, mini scramblers uh, back in the day. Bikes which in fact uh, are still uh, quite popular and, and fetching good money even here in uh, 2024 and this uh, one here is certainly uh, a little uh, cracker and it would make a fine little motorbike uh, for your son, uh, daughter or maybe even uh, grandson. And uh, this display uh, certainly appears to have uh, almost every model uh, made uh, in the early 1980s with uh, these uh, YZ80s uh, through uh, to the 125, 250s and of course uh, these uh, 490. And even uh, this YZ490J uh, looks in very good original uh, condition. So uh, the owner of these bikes certainly has uh, a thing about uh, old uh, Yamaha's because he's even uh, taken the time to have stands and uh, number plates uh, made up. Although uh, regardless of uh, what kind of uh, off-roaders uh, that you're into, there was uh, certainly something uh, for everybody at this year's show and uh, if your uh, particular bag was uh, maybe even trials or uh, motocross or speedway or even enduro bikes, uh, then there was certainly something uh, here uh, to keep you interested as you made your way uh, around uh, the halls. But certainly this uh, particular uh, YZ Yamaha collection was uh, quite impressive. Uh, okay, these bikes were maybe not as highly polished as some of the machines that were on display at the show, but uh, my guess is that uh, all of these bikes are more than likely used on a regular basis, hence their condition and general patina. And so this next organisation was certainly worth a mention because these guys do do a lot of excellent work raising money for charity and these guys are the Twin Shock sidecar uh, charity series who uh, have a range of uh, different events around uh, the country and I did learn on the day that uh, it's uh, the race winners of the each individual classes who uh, actually get to choose who they donate uh, their prize money to or uh, which charity uh, receives it but uh, the actual riders themselves uh, don't get uh, any cash or uh, any silverware so uh, it's a big uh, well done to everybody involved in this uh, particular uh, organisation. But as you can see, the club members have brought along a couple of their outfits for people uh, to have a look at. And this particular Rintut Wasp chassis 
has a big Yamaha four-stroke motor uh, to power it and uh, bolted on uh, to that chassis. I assume that that is the outfit's alloy oil tank with the motor's oil cooler uh, just uh, next to it. Now that little uh, coiled cable there, as far as I'm aware, is the engine cutoff cable whereby uh, the driver or pilot uh, would wrap that around his right wrist and uh, if there was uh, ever an incident where he'd uh, get thrown from the machine then that connection uh, would be severed from the motor's ignition and uh, the bike uh, would simply uh, stop. But as you can see it's a big uh, formidable lump uh, of a motor this big single cylinder uh, Yamaha engine probably uh, a 650 or maybe even uh, slightly bigger but the club uh, did issue a set of rules just in case you had the hankering to be a passenger on one of these outfits so it's definitely uh, no touching any buttons or levers and no screaming or crying and uh, no <laughs> jumping off on, on purpose and uh, absolutely hold on tight and <laughs> finally it's year round uh, at the bar that is of course if you actually uh, survive uh, the ordeal. Now this other uh, nice looking outfit here was uh, actually ridden by a father uh, and his daughter and uh, the father did his very best to try and explain to me just uh, how much fun it was uh, blasting around at a racetrack uh, with your precious uh, sibling uh, sitting uh, or standing in the passenger but somehow uh, I don't think my daughter would be uh, best pleased if I asked her to have a go on uh, one of these machines but uh, this uh, outfit here certainly has a big Norton 750 or maybe even an 850 twin uh, to power it uh, along the track and I certainly uh, do remember these big uh, Nortons on uh, these outfits racing uh, many years ago and uh, the excitement and the smell and the noise it was uh, certainly a spectacle uh, that's for sure and if you ever get a chance to maybe head along to one of these uh, motocross sidecar racing events then uh, do uh, make a point of going because uh, if you're into uh, motorcycles in any way shape or form then you'll certainly love what these guys do uh, with these uh, three wheelers. But uh, one of the other uh, things about these uh, sidecar racing outfits is the uh, engineering that goes into building them because uh, not only is the chassis uh, a work of art in its own right, it's uh, finding and then fitting uh, your chosen motor uh, to power it. And when you see how this big uh, Norton's uh, shoehorned into this uh, three-wheel frame, you can see that it's uh, a logistical challenge uh, to get it all uh, to fit. Although the other attraction for me with these bikes is uh, watching them perform uh, on the track and when you can get uh, even half a dozen of these uh, chariots coming off the start line in a hail of uh, big rooster tails and the smell of castor lard then it's uh, certainly a sight and a sound that you'll never uh, forget and we'll actually be uh, taking a look at another sidecar example in a later episode uh, from uh, this year's show but uh, certainly well done to all of the gang at the Twin Shock Sidecar uh, Charity Series, both uh, for keeping these outfits on the track and for the fantastic uh, work that they do raising money for worthwhile uh, charities. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about their organisation and what they do, then just uh, check out their uh, Facebook page. Right, so uh, next up, this was uh, yet another uh, old classic that I came across on my travels around the Telford Halls and uh, this little beauty here is uh, a 1960s Rickman uh, Matisse uh, big single cylinder uh, matchless uh, four-stroker. Now, uh, there was no information displayed uh, with this bike on the day and there uh, didn't appear to be anybody in the vicinity to provide uh, any background but uh, I'm pretty sure that this will be uh, a 1960s uh, Rickman frame with uh, that late uh, 1950s or maybe even early 1960s big single cylinder uh, matchless motor uh, sitting uh, inside. But with regards to the uh, big matchless uh, engine I'm certainly not the man uh, to speak to if you want to know 
uh, all of the gory details and specs of this particular uh, matchless uh, motor. And uh, those of you uh, watching this video who are uh, familiar with these big British-made uh, single-cylinder engines will know uh, straight away exactly uh, what you're looking at here. But uh, as I said previously, uh, these old uh, matchless engines and uh, the BSAs and the AJSs and uh, many of the other uh, British uh, built engines were uh, used to great effect in these kind of uh, pre-65 and pre-70 uh, scramblers when uh, they were first uh, used a way back in the 1960s. Now here at the back end of our Rickman uh, matchless it's a pair of uh, quite modern uh, rock shock uh, suspension units which uh, I'm sure that uh, some of the original riders who raced these bikes uh, back then would have uh, loved to have had these kind of modern style uh, suspension systems when uh, they raced these bikes in the 1960s but uh, these rock shocks are certainly uh, good quality and of course they're all made uh, right here in uh, the UK. Of course, these uh, handlebars on the bikes and the controls uh, aren't the original uh, 1960s parts, but uh, these kind of changes are uh, more than likely just uh, for the rider's own uh, benefit, just to make the bike a bit more uh, user-friendly uh, when it's out uh, on the track. Now, the bike's front forks are almost certainly Italian uh, Seriani uh, units because uh, these forks were quite a common uh, fitment on many of these Rickman uh, frame kits from uh, back in the day, but it's uh, a fantastic uh, combination uh, of that superbly engineered Rickman uh, chassis and this beautifully uh, sculpted uh, matchless engine, which I expect uh, sounds uh, fantastic uh, through that uh, unobstructed uh, chrome-plated exhaust uh, system. And this particular uh, old-school uh, classic was just one of hundreds of similar bikes that were on display at the show this year and uh, we have uh, certainly more of the same in the pipeline to feature in uh, the forthcoming uh, episodes. And so next up this uh, is another bike that uh, certainly got a lot of attention uh, over the two days of the show and this is uh, Steve Coughlin's uh, 1988 RM250 uh, Suzuki a model that uh, Steve told me that he used to race uh, back in 1989 when he was uh, a younger man and it's uh, been his favourite uh, race machine uh, ever since then. But this is another bike that uh, we're uh, going to do a full uh, feature on uh, on my channel at a later uh, date but uh, for the purposes uh, of our Telford uh, look around we'll uh, just keep it kind of uh, short and sweet uh, for the time being. But basically, uh, Steve told me that he bought this bike uh, back in October of 2011 uh, for the princely sum of just 500 smackaroos. And uh, actually, he paid uh, the money without even uh, taking a look at the bike or even seeing a picture uh, of it because uh, the seller uh, did promise him that uh, it was all in very good condition, but uh, just uh, needed a bit of tidying up. Anyhow, it was a few days later when uh, parts uh, of a 1988 RM250 Suzuki arrived uh, on a pallet at Steve's address. And uh, just to make sure exactly uh, what he'd bought, uh, Steve uh, then threw all of the parts together just to get an idea of uh, what was missing. And in fact, he was uh, so disgusted at what he'd just bought that uh, he threw the lot in the corner uh, of his workshop. And uh, there it lay for uh, quite some time. Anyhow, with the passage of time and uh, after Steve had uh, calmed down a bit, uh, he then decided that he would rebuild uh, the RM and uh, make it in one of the best 88 250s around. And what you actually see here is uh, years and years of Steve collecting uh, new old stock original Suzuki parts to fit uh, to the bike to eventually make it it looked better than uh, brand new. 
So eventually, uh, what we're looking at here now is a fully restored uh, 1988 RM250 Suzuki that's been uh, rebuilt using 100% uh, new old stock original uh, parts. And it's uh, taken Steve uh, six years to gather up all of the original parts that he needed. And uh, some of those parts, uh, mainly engine components, are uh, nigh on uh, unobtainable these days. But... Uh, with plenty hard work and uh, perseverance, uh, Steve managed uh, to source exactly uh, what he needed to complete the bike. And uh, this year's 2024 Telford Show was uh, certainly uh, the best place uh, to put the bike uh, on display. Now, I'm not even going to try and list uh, all of the parts and the work that's uh, gone into building this uh, fantastic bike. But uh, as I said, I've already reserved uh, a spot on my YouTube channel to do a full uh, feature on Steve Suzuki uh, at a later date, which will probably uh, happen uh, as soon as we've completed all of the videos uh, from this year's show. So uh, make sure that you retune uh, to take uh, a look at that. And uh, even uh, parts like uh, the original 88 uh, RM Plastics are uh, the real McCoy on this bike and you just can't uh, locate these kind of rare parts uh, these days. So uh, Steve's been uh, super lucky that uh, he's obtained uh, these uh, very rare uh, items. But uh, this RM Suzuki was just one of uh, three cracking bikes that uh, Steve had on his stand on the day because he also had a stunning uh, Kawasaki and a lovely uh, 1978 Maiko uh, 440, which will also uh, take a look at uh, later in uh, another episode. But certainly uh, look out for the full story on Steve Coughlin's 88 RM250 coming soon to uh, CDB uh, TV. Okay, so uh, this uh, was another uh, quite tidy bike that was uh, sitting on the West Moreland uh, Motor Club stand. And uh, this is what I think is a 1974 or maybe even possibly a 1975 uh, 440 uh, Twin Shock uh, Michael. Now, again, this was uh, another bike that was being uh, offered up for sale and it would certainly make a decent uh, bike if you wanted to do the pre-75s or even uh, the Twin Shock or uh, Classic uh, races. But uh, of course, this bike it may have been sold over the course uh, of the weekend of the show, but uh, then again, uh, maybe not. And uh, if you think you might be interested in this machine, then just uh, give Steve a call on uh, this uh, number. But these uh, older uh, 74s or uh, 75s are uh, getting a bit harder uh, to find these days, but uh, back in their heyday of the mid 1970s when uh, the likes of the legendary Adolf Wheel uh, was riding uh, these bikes to great success. There were uh, plenty of them uh, going around and they were very popular with uh, motocross racers uh, of their day. But uh, this uh, featured uh, 440 Michael uh, maybe isn't a fully uh, stock original bike, but uh, it does have uh, a replacement exhaust expansion chamber and uh, those alloy uh, side panels as well which is uh, not anything that you wouldn't expect on an old twin shocker that's about uh, 40 odd uh, years old now but uh, things like these handlebars uh, certainly look the real deal because uh, back in the day these crossbars uh, were uh, welded across the bike like uh, you see here so uh, these uh, certainly look like the correct items uh, for its uh, time. Although the overall uh, condition of this bike is uh, very good and it looks like it's uh, almost ready uh, to go. So this would make a, a very good uh, starter bike if you wanted uh, to get into uh, twin shock uh, racing. But as I said, uh, who knows, the seller uh, may still have uh, the bike. So uh, if this is maybe something that you might be interested in, then as I said, just call Steve uh, on that number that you saw at the beginning of this clip. But this uh, quite nice looking uh, Michael and uh, a few other bikes as well, uh, as I said, were on display in the West uh, Moreland uh, Motor Club stand who were 
in the process of promoting uh, all of their events that were planned uh, for the forthcoming uh, year. And uh, they also uh, had this uh, rather uh, tasty looking uh, 250 uh, Greaves on display that was uh, promoting the up and coming uh, Dave Harper uh, Greaves uh, Championship, which is uh, a Greaves uh, racing series uh, for all uh, Greaves scramblers that were made from 1954 to 1973. And uh, the series was actually uh, initially uh, started by uh, one of the uh, Greaves employees uh, called uh, Dave Harper. But this particular uh, Dave Harper series has been uh, running since uh, I think it was 2001 when it was uh, first held at uh, Melancy in Essex and it, uh, they tell me it's contested by a very healthy field of uh, over 35 riders who race at uh, various racetracks across uh, the UK but it's all uh, usually part of the pre-65 uh, uh, motocross club uh, events. And so this uh, featured 250 Greaves is uh, naturally uh, one of the bikes that compete in uh, that series and uh, this is uh, Alan Graves' uh, race bike. Again, uh, not a fully original uh, model because it does have uh, quite a few modern uh, parts uh, bolted onto it but uh, mostly uh, these are all uh, still in keeping uh, with the rules and the regulations of classic uh, racing. And uh, as you can see here, this uh, Greaves engine has uh, a much more modern Makuni carburetor uh, fitted to it uh, as opposed to what probably uh, would have been an old uh, Amel concentric uh, carburetor uh, way back uh, in the day. But certainly this is a very uh, nice uh, piece of kit and a good uh, representation of uh, the kind of bikes that you can uh, catch a glimpse of if you ever uh, get the chance to pop along to one of the race events at the uh, Dave Harper uh, Greaves Championship during the course of 2024. Okay, so uh, this uh, next machine here is the latest creation from uh, Lee Perry, also known as the Husk Varnaman, and uh, this bike here is uh, the latest uh, Swedish racer from his stable of a uh, Husqvarna uh, race bikes and this uh, machine here is affectionately called uh, Crazy Sue in uh, memory of Lee's uh, late uh, partner uh, Suzanne David but uh, it's a massive 595cc four stroker with some uh, fantastic engineering in its construction including a full electric start uh, modification. Now, in the past, I've seen uh, quite a few of Lee's uh, bikes uh, down the years, and uh, I can tell you that this guy here is no backstreet uh, spanner man. Lee uh, knows exactly how to design, build, and uh, put these uh, lovely Husky specials uh, together. And not only uh, does he uh, restore and build uh, these Huskies, he also uh, races them as well. And that's, of course, uh, in between uh, selling his uh, Husqvarna uh, spare parts that uh, he usually uh, specialises in uh, all manner of uh, two-stroke and uh, four-stroke Husky race bikes uh, from 1970 up until uh, 1989. So he's another uh, very good contact if you need uh, spare parts and uh, bits and pieces for your ageing uh, Husk Varnas. So anyhow, this uh, big uh, bruiser of a Husky motor uh, would have uh, more than likely have been about uh, 510cc uh, originally, but uh, uh, Lee's had this uh, engine uh, on a course of steroids and <laughs> he's also bored it out to what is now 595cc, uh, uh, so there's certainly uh, no shortage of horsepower uh, when this big beauty here uh, gets fired up. But this is the uh, very first uh, engine that uh, Lee's fitted with an electric start and uh, uh, this engine here is uh, a bit of a, a test bed uh, because uh, at a later date uh, Lee intends to uh, make uh, the electric start as uh, part 
uh, of a bolt-on kit that uh, you can buy over the counter. So uh, no more uh, kicking your big husky four bangers to get it going. Just uh, a quick touch of a button and uh, away you go. But you can see uh, the engine starter motor uh, mounted here at the back of uh, the engine cylinder, which uh, naturally uh, needs uh, a battery to power it and uh, leaves uh, very neatly incorporated it into uh, a separate compartment here inside this uh, custom-made alloy airbox. But it's all been uh, very well uh, thought through and engineered and uh, by all accounts, uh, this uh, starter system works very well out uh, on the track. And uh, also, uh, I do remember Lee uh, telling me on the day that because of uh, where the starter motor was mounted on this engine, he had to then uh, convert the original cable-operated clutch to a hydraulic unit, which is uh, another uh, good upgrade for one of these big uh, Husky engines. But uh, this bike here has so many trick and upgraded parts bolted onto it that we're never uh, going to be able to cover them all in this uh, short clip. So this is going to be uh, yet another uh, special uh, for a full feature at uh, a later date. And again, here's another uh, nice modification that Lee's made uh, to the Big Husky, or uh, Crazy Sue as it's uh, now known, and uh, that's to extend uh, the seat over the top of the tank so that the rider can get his weight as far forward as possible just to try and help the bike uh, make uh, sharper turns or even <laughs> maybe to try and stop that front wheel from lifting uh, when it comes off uh, the start line. So as we make our way along into the bike's uh, rear suspension uh, department, it's uh, a good quality pair of uh, YSS uh, piggyback units that are bolted uh, onto the back of our 595 uh, special and I expect that uh, these uh, front forks as well uh, will have been uh, kind of beefed up to cope uh, with some of the extra weight of that uh, starter motor and battery and uh, some of the other add-ons that we have uh, on this uh, 595 but uh, you can just imagine uh, the growl that uh, will come from this a big uh, megaphone tailpipe when uh, that uh, four-stroke husky motor uh, gets fired uh, into life and this uh, tailpipe is another uh, quality item fitted to this uh, husky although uh, another uh, little intriguing upgrade that i did notice on lee's uh, crazy sue concoction was that it appeared to have uh, twin leading shoe brakes here uh, on the back which uh, was quite unusual because uh, these uh, twin brakes are uh, normally found uh, on the front end uh, of these uh, kind of specials. Although without question uh, this is uh, yet another uh, quality build uh, from Lee and uh, his Husqvarna Man uh, franchise and uh, as I mentioned there's uh, quite a lot uh, more intricate engineering on this bike than we've actually covered in this very uh, short clip but we'll certainly uh, pencil this bike in for a full and uh, detailed feature at a later date here on my uh, CDB uh, TV uh, channel. But a stunning uh, looking uh, machine and a great uh, tribute to Lee's uh, late partner Suzanne uh, David who uh, actually uh, along with Lee uh, did attend this Telford show for the best part of uh, 10 years so I can imagine it was uh, probably an emotional uh, time for Lee being at the show this year without his friend and uh, soulmate. But if you need any more information on Lee's uh, products or uh, Husky services then it's uh, probably uh, just best to visit his website at uh, huskvanaman.com so there you have it, that's the latest uh, batch of machines from the 2024 Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike Show. We do have uh, lots more uh, lovely bikes uh, to show you uh, from uh, this year's event. And if you're not already a subscriber to CDB uh, TV, then I hope you'll consider 
uh, doing that very small thing because that way uh, you won't miss out on any uh, future videos uh, that uh, I upload. But I hope you'll join us again uh, very soon when we'll be showing you more of these superb classics from The Telford Show and uh, I hope to see you back here again when we take a look at uh, episode 3.